Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Teddy. This is our rig Maximus. We're doing something a little different today. We're gonna go over uh, some of the upgrades we've done to our rig, as well as go over how it is as a family vehicle. We bought it like this with the lift on it and the suspension on it. Uh, it was built by Epic Adventure Outfitters and absolutely no complaints whatsoever about that. That is my favorite part of the vehicle is how it drives. On and off road is amazing. Uh, we did go over all the specs and everything on the suspension in a previous video, so we won't go over that today. Today we're going over the add-ons, which is the bumper, the winch, the uh, bed rack, and the rooftop tent. As well as we're gonna go over how it is as a family vehicle, so let's get at it. So everyone, here we are at uh, Epic Adventure Outfitters. Again, my new bumper and winch. And check this out, this is super cool. How often do you walk into a shop where you have your Jeep up on the wall? How cool is that? <laughs> This concludes the bumper install of our segment here. If you notice, you lose the fog lights. Nothing really lost there. They weren't very any good. They were basically from the JK. He hasn't cleaned it yet. Why? It's what not clean yet? <laughs> Stop vlogging. <laughs> now look at it. Wow. Wow. Wax it. WD-40. Wow. So dirt just falls right up. Before? After. Oh, that's really good. All right, I'm gonna go in order of uh, the way we purchased them. Okay, so we started with the uh, bumper. This is the Evo quarter pounder. Okay, it's a quarter inch steel. I don't know what else to say about the bumper. I mean, it does the job. I did want the short bumper for off-roading to get these wheels up on obstacles when we needed to. Then we added the winch. Now the winch has given me a little bit of trouble. So this is the Warn VR12. So the problems I've had with this winch, when it came in the box, it was already spooled up with the line, the synthetic line. I assumed that it was spooled up under tension um, and it was not. So my fault, I, I fully admit that's my fault. I should have double checked the line before I went out to use it. Um, so if you, if you buy a Warn winch, with the synthetic line, I guess any winch, really. Just make sure that it's spooled under tension. What happened to me was, the first time I needed to use it, the drum was spinning and it was tightening from the inside out. 
too much pressure on the bolt that holds the synthetic line in and it snaps. Leaving the drum spinning and uh, I wasn't going anywhere. So we did an on the trail fix and ended up getting out of trouble. But something to keep in mind. The other one which is more concerning is the remote for the winch. It does have a Bluetooth um, option. But what happened was while we were out there, I dropped the remote into water. Being out here, we get a lot of rain. There's a lot of puddles, water crossings, snow. And once the remote got wet, it was automatically bringing the winch line in. And there was nothing I could do to stop it. I couldn't turn it off. With the Bluetooth connection, it was just constantly going. I was waiting for something to break. Luckily, eventually it did stop. Since it's dried out, it's been okay. But it's very concerning considering it got wet and it did not work properly. Maybe some sort of sealant or something. Or just leave the remote in the cab if there's a chance of it getting wet. I wish the remote was a little bit better on this winch. Other than that, it's worked great. I love how it free spools. It's so easy. And yeah, that's the bumper and the winch. Let's move to the back of the truck. We'll go over the rooftop tent. All right, the rooftop tent. It is the Smitty Built Overlander. I just bought a uh, cheap option for a rooftop tent. It does the job. Fabric is feels very good quality. It does have the LED strip on the inside. Uh, it sleeps my wife, myself, and Theo comfortably in there. We're all fairly small people. I'm the biggest at five foot five and 155 pounds. So the mattress for our size, no problem at all. We didn't have to add a topper or anything like that. It's very comfortable. The one thing is when I go to level the Jeep, the ladder isn't quite long enough sometimes, but there is a extension you can buy for the ladder. We haven't done that yet. Um, we always just kind of put rocks or something to, to make it work. But overall, rooftop tent, no complaints there. It seems to be uh, holding up. The straps are all kind of falling apart already, but as far as the tent itself, it's been, it's been doing pretty good. Eventually, I want to get into a hard top, of course, but uh, that'll be down the road. Next up is the bed rack. If you've been following along, um, I got the rooftop tent first. I actually ordered the bed rack first, but it was weeks away and uh, the tent I got a couple days after I ordered the rack. I ended up going on a trip with Sean from the story till now and I had to build a rack quickly in the back of the, the bed here. For sale, custom built gladiator bed rack. Thousand dollars, I'll even help install it. Pressure treated wood, good for the elements. <laughs> Um, that rack is still for sale. I haven't had any offers on it yet, but if you're interested, please send me a message. This rack is the Rebel Off-Road Explore Half Height. Fit and finish, it fits perfectly, and I love how everything is easily adjustable. So you can pretty much, pretty much fit anything on this rack that you want. I don't know what to put on it just yet. I know I need max tracks, so that's gonna go on there. And, uh, a few other things, but I kind of don't want a bunch of stuff all over the place, so we'll see. Um, maybe a Pelican box or something. I don't know yet. So as a family vehicle, this thing is actually really nice. It's nice to go take the top off, get some ice cream. Um, you know, we like to have a lot of fun, so we just blast the music, top down. It's extremely fun. My wife likes to be sitting up a little bit higher. She can see traffic a little better. Uh, that sense of safety. Also, as far as fuel consumption, I don't know if it's because it's been re-geared or if it's a manual transmission or I don't know what is going on, but as far as fuel consumption, it's actually pretty good on fuel. We're getting about 14, 13 liters per hundred uh, in the city, which is pretty good. On the highway, we get it down to anywhere from eight to 10 uh, liters per hundred. So. I don't, again, I don't know why that is, but that's the way it is. We did a trip where there was a uh, Eco, Diesel, uh, Eco Diesel Gladiator 
gas gladiator and uh, this one manual transmission and re-geared and the eco diesel gladiator had the best fuel consumption it was only a half tank uh, for the gas one did a full tank but he was also the one pushing through the snow that was Sean uh, we did the same trip uh, the next day uh, that was for the drone recovery and I was just under a half tank so not quite as good as the eco diesel which is to be expected but still blown away by the fuel consumption of this rig with 38 inch tires. Other than that, as far as a do everything vehicle, this is what to get. It's a truck, it can tow, you got the bed, you can throw stuff in the back. It's roomy in the back seat. You got your leather interior, all the creature comforts in this thing. So as far as a do everything vehicle, I would say this is it. Top down, like where else can you get a, a convertible truck that comes in manual transmission that's pretty decent on fuel. I mean, no complaints here. We've had a lot of vehicles and this is the one so far that we've absolutely loved. 10 out of 10 for the, uh, the Jeep Gladiator. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I know this is a little bit different. Uh, the next video is going to be uh, in our uh, travel trailer. We're just doing a, a one week trip. Um, my birthday is coming up tomorrow actually and we're getting going away. It's my 40th birthday. We're going to have a little getaway. Uh, we'll bring you that video as well. And we have our uh, 10 year anniversary coming up the following week. So should be a good time. And then we're going to get back to wheeling. So two weeks from now we're going to be back to wheeling. We're going to hit up uh, Cornwall. Get revenge on that fire tower. We didn't make it last time. but we're gonna make it this time. I'm pretty confident. I've seen some snow reports. There is still snow up there, but we'll probably make it. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. We just wanted to give Epic Adventure Outfitters a big thank you for helping us out with the bed rack, the bumper, and the winch. Thanks, guys. Also, our merch is available at dirtyanddangerous.com. And if you stuck with this video until the end, be sure to give us a follow on Instagram at unwinding underscore roads for some of the behind the scenes stuff as well as a sneak peek of the travel trailer edition to our channel. Until next time, go away, get lost, and unwind.